Hey team, thanks again for leading uh, so well. We have just a few weeks left in our program and you have been leading strong. And yeah, I really appreciate that. This has been a challenging year and I appreciate everyone's involvement. This week, we're all together in the chapel at Beulah West Campus starting at 6.30 p.m. This past week was especially challenging for those who call Fort McMurray home. We currently have two of my friends living with us uh, temporarily. I know when crisis hits, many of us say, what can I do? And I'm sure many of you stepped in and stepped up this week to help people. Now, you are in a unique spot as a small group leader for when crisis comes to your door in the form of a student's circumstance. Chances are, if you stay around long enough as a youth small group leader, at least one of your students will experience a crisis. And it's important that in a crisis, we know how to best respond to our students. In a crisis like Fort Mac, obviously, practical care like food and lodging, etc., are important. But what, what about the rest of the care? For our students, they need practical care, but often our role is, is one of more emotional and spiritual care provider. We're not professional counselors, but we do have a significant opportunity in these situations. Here are a few suggestions for all of us as our students experience crisis. First off, number one, timing, not necessarily time. Our timing is more important than the amount of time we spend with a student. If a student has a lost loved one or their dog, and the first call we give them is, is a week and a half later, that's poor timing. Like the firefighters, we need to be the first responders. You may not be able to talk for a long time with them, but just a call or a message to say, hey, I'm, I heard that this, fill in the blank, can we talk later today? Or how, can, how are you doing with, again, fill in the blank, is a good place to start. Some students will want to talk your ear off. Others may just want to know that you noticed. Timing is so important. Number two, just as important, ask them to share their story. Most of our care comes in the way of listening, not actually talking or giving advice. Try to listen without unnecessary questions. Repeat back to them what you're hearing and trying not to give too many judgments up front. The third thing that we can do is help them make decisions. Don't make decisions for them as much as possible, unless of course their decisions will be harmful to themselves or maybe to someone else. In crisis, students need to make decisions for themselves uh, how, how to proceed. Chances are that the crisis has caused a deep sense of loss of control. Decision making allows them to have a sense of control. Yes, we are ultimately know that Jesus is the one in control, but he also gives people decisions to make, and we don't want to take uh, that decision away from students. We don't want to make them just dependent on us. Number four, and finally, identify other support structures. Help the students think through their own avenues of care, like friends, family, ways to handle stress, and Jesus himself. Ask them who helps them through difficult times and who surrounds them during these times. Encourage them to lean on people and, of course, on Jesus. Don't be their savior because you're not, and Jesus does a much better job of it. Point them towards Jesus and even pray for them where appropriate. Your students may not be in crisis right now, so tuck this away and remember it for when they are. Sticking to these guidelines will help you make a huge impact in the lives of students. I myself am a former youth whose leader did these very same things and helped me when, when I needed it the most. The impact in my life has shaped my passion and direction in ministry. So thanks for watching. That's what I have for you today. We will see you tomorrow uh, when we're all together in the chapel. Take a look at the bottom of the email for more announcement as to, announcements as to what's coming up.